So I met this kid in my youth group when I was 15 years old. I went to a very charismatic church, you know, the kind where you lift up your hands and you worship the Lord and you sing Jehovah Jireh 77 times in a row. <laughs> that was my church. That was my church. And I'll never forget this particular Wednesday night, um, sitting there with my girlfriends, just lifting up my hands, worshiping God. And, and I looked in the back of the room and in came walking in the three of the yummiest guys I'd ever seen. And I was like, thank you, Jesus. I was so excited to be in church, you know, and these guys walked in, they found their seats and they lifted up their hands and they began to worship the Lord. And it was really a moment for me where I thought, man, these guys are amazing. You know, they, they really are amazing and they seem like they love God. And I thought, I've got to get to know these guys. Surely one of them will fall in love with me, if not all three of them. <laughs> you know, I was really hopeful at that moment. Uh, but we lived on the same side of town, got to go to the same fellowship group together. I got to watch their lives and see if they really were interested in the things of God. And I learned that they were. And uh, I had my eye on the youngest brother of the three. He had his eye on me. And I was so excited. You know, every girl in the youth group wanted to date these guys. And they all had their eyes on these guys. But the one brother had his eye on me. And uh, I couldn't have been happier when the phone rang and we went on our first date. I was so excited. And uh, we dated for seven and a half years. And uh, I went off to Bible college and uh, came back from college. And then we got married. And they were truly some of the greatest days of my life. Everything that I experienced in my dating relationship with him now just overflowed into our marriage. And I loved it. He was the guy that, uh, th the guy that spoke life into my spirit. He was the guy of adventure and of fun. And I love that. He truly loved me well. And uh, he was my absolute best friend. And uh, I was in a season of my life after 11 years of marriage, signed my first record deal in 1995, took his first name as my last name. Together we were Tammy and Trent Linderink. But now on the platform, I became Tammy Trent. And I loved it because we were in it together. He started managing me. All kinds of great things were going on, but I was also still in a season where I just sort of wondered, like, what's next? Sometimes we're in those places where we feel bored, we feel stuck, we feel unmoved and we just wonder where God is and uh, if he's still listening, if he's still there, do you still see this girl? You know, some of those questioning seasons. And um, I was in that season where I just sort of wondered what's next? You know, am I supposed to do another album, uh, write a book or be on the road touring or come off the road after 11 years of marriage, maybe starting a family? You know, a lot of questions I had and I was asked to go on a mission trip, trip to Jamaica and uh, I thought it was a really pivotal time in my life and uh, I, I felt like God was really going to do something and show up and um, tell me something important. Uh, I felt like this was a, a real important trip. We came to this beautiful legendary place called the Blue Lagoon and uh, Trent wanted to free dive in the Blue Lagoon and I remember sitting there on the edge of the water as he slipped into the water and halfway between the dock and that hole where he was free diving, he lifted up his head out of the water and he waved goodbye to me just like he had done a million times before. Only that time was different. I had no idea that that'd be the last time I'd ever see him alive. So I watched him a few times come up and down for breath and then I got sidetracked watching some other swimmers in the area and finishing my lunch. And Probably 30 minutes had gone by and I realized I hadn't seen him. So I looked out into the Blue Lagoon and I, I didn't see anything, couldn't find anything. I got closer to the edge of the water and started to look out more intently and I still saw nothing. And I remember that moment, fear gripped every part of my being, really for like the first time in my life. I mean, we've all had fear and I'm afraid, and, but like the depth of fear, if you've ever experienced it, I was experiencing it that moment. I knew that something was wrong, desperately wrong and I didn't know how to change it. I didn't know how to stop it. I knew really at that moment that my life would never be the same again. And uh, we called in a dive team that began to search for him in the lagoon and hours went by and they still found nothing and then it, day turned into dark and we had to call off the search and the search began the next morning. And I'll never forget um, being at the home of two strangers at that time as the search began. The doctor coming into my room, he said, Tammy, come into the room. I want to show you the television quickly. And I walked into that room the morning of September 11th, 2001. And uh, I was watching the television as the second plane plowed into the Twin Towers in New York City. And uh, I thought for the first time in my life that this must be the end of the world. You know, I really felt like that. And um, I don't know if you remember where you might have been at that moment. I don't think any of us will ever fully forget that the impact that that had on all of our lives but especially on my life 
uh, as I was stuck in Jamaica searching for my own husband, you know, and then I was was trapped there basically for 10 more days. No, no flights were leaving, all flights were grounded. And um, it was really a time in my life where I just began to call out to God, like, God, if you're real, if you see this girl, I need you more than ever before I need to know that you're real. I need to know that heaven is real. You know, all those things that we've maybe growing up in our youth group being taught, you know, like it all came down to this moment for me. Like, like I'd practiced for this moment my whole life, worshiping in church, going through the Word of God, Wednesday night church services, learning about the things of God, memorizing scripture, being taught that God is faithful, that nothing will He ever leave me alone in. You know, all of these things that I practiced believing it and living it my whole life and it all came down to this moment that I really believe it, that I really believe all the promises of God. And you know what? I stood on the edge of the water and I, I made a choice. Life is about a series of choices, you know, and this was just another one for me. And I made a choice at that moment to, to believe, to believe and um, to trust God. And to know that somehow he put my life back together again. Now listen, I hated everything that was happening in my life. I hated it. And there's times I still say it today. You know, all these years later, you know, like I hate what's happened in my life. I would go back and take it back in a heartbeat and have the life I had. But I can't deny that God has, has done something with it. Um, I, could, I could even dare say that, you know, that I believe God has chosen me. Um, because hopefully he knew that I would do something beautiful with it, you know. And, and maybe today if, um, if you're in a place in your life you just feel like you can't breathe anymore. And, and why God? Why, why me? Maybe, maybe you take a step back from that and, and see it as something like God is trusting you. God's trusting you today with whatever it is you might be going through. And he's trusting that you're going to come out, that you're going to choose to come out. On the other side, you're going to come out ahead. You're going to come out stronger. You're going to come out braver, more beautiful, more courageous. And, and if you allow God, He will take this in your life, the circumstances, and He will use it. He will use this and He will use you to impact somebody else's life. And I'm telling you, there's nothing greater than we're, when, when we're going through something, even when we hate it, and we can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. There's nothing greater than when you finally get to the end of the tunnel and you see all these people standing there going, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for doing something with your pain that has helped me. Thank you. There's nothing greater than that. So I would encourage you today to not give up, to not play the part of a victim and blame God for everything in your life may be happening for a reason. If God sees that it will serve a greater purpose in your life, I believe He'll allow it to happen in your life. And I believe He has seen that even my loss becoming widowed at a young age, He saw that as becoming something greater in my life, that I would do something with it. Now, I've not done everything right along the way, but, but I have given God the glory. And I have seen thousands and thousands of people uh, find hope in their own circumstances because I was brave enough to stand up and say, I still believe.